Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we got a pretty interesting one because we're going to be taking a look at a laser engraver. So this one's called the Order Master 2 and it has a large working space. So in this video we're going to unbox it, set it up and do some burning. Alright, so let's get started. Alright, so I'm pretty excited about this video because I haven't really messed with lasers. I've been seeing these new lasers coming up and getting quite popular with people engraving things. So let's see what this is all about. This is the box that this one comes in, so it's not large, so that's a good thing. So let's go ahead and open this thing up. We do have this label on the box. It says order, and I guess the model number, Laser Master 2 is what it's called. So all right, so this is quite familiar. We got foam. Now, I think I did open this thing upside down, which is actually a good thing because now we can flip it over and just pull the box up. So there was a layer of foam on top, and judging by all these parts here, guys, looks like this is definitely going to be an involved installation. So this is more of a kit, as you guys can see, that you have to put together. So we do have a parts list, and this basically shows all the parts that comes with this laser. User manual, go online to see that. And here we have some safety instructions of how to use the laser. So let's go ahead and just pull everything out. So it looks like we have our hardware, some bolts, wrenches, zip ties, a little brush. Looks like some little wood panels we can burn on. Some kind of erasable marker or something. More parts with belts, switches, a USB cable to connect from the laser to the computer and by the way you will need a computer to connect to this laser and as far as I understand it has to be a Windows also so here we have our electrical wiring that looks like it's all just plug-and-play and we also get some green tinted glasses for safety looks like here's our control panel so here we have the main piece and this looks like one of the axes so we have a plain axis of X and Y and our X is right here so this whole thing moves around. So here we have a stepper motor, and this is for the x-axis. Our power adapter, which is 12 volts, 3 amps. The main part, our laser. And last but not least, four aluminum channels that our frame will be built out of. So yeah, that's everything. So I'm going to go ahead and unpack everything. We're going to lay it out, find the instructions, and we'll start assembling this thing. All right, and so these are all the pieces that we got to work with. I went ahead and downloaded the manual, which if you're having a hard time finding, I'm going to have a link in the description. So here we have a picture of what it's going to look like. Some warnings. Do not operate the laser if you're not a professional. So there are some dangers in, you know, causing a fire or burning things. So be careful with that. So you might want to read all these things. And here is the assembly procedure. So step one, we're going to start with the longer channels and we're going to insert two corner connectors. If we look at the channels, we have some longer and shorter ones. So we're going to use the long ones right now, or I guess one of the longer ones. And if we look at it, we can see there is a wallowed out part and then just the normal wallowed out part of where our bolt will go through. And then this back here, we have our other parts that we're going to need and basically all of our hardware. And there's quite a bit of it actually. So these are the angle brackets here and they have little set screws in them and there's also an allen wrench in the bag so we're going to use that to turn the set screws and so the way this thing goes together is actually quite simple the l bracket will slide right in on the inner part and going to step two is we're going to take our other channel that is shorter and that's going to go into the other end of the bracket and so it locks it in there and so our bolt now will go through the long channel into the shorter channel and there are four longer bolts, which are M525s. They are Phillips, so you're gonna need a screwdriver. And so it simply just goes in the corner and screws into the channel here. You can go ahead and snug that up a bit. And we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Get the L bracket, put it through, then grab our other shorter extrusion and the long bolt. Put the extrusion through the bracket, and then start our bolt. 
So yeah, this is what it will look like. You can see the brackets on the corners. All right guys, so I made a little bit more room. Now for the next step, so we did one and two. So step three is basically we need to install four little lock nuts here and they go two on each side of the channels here. So we're just gonna simply insert them just like that. So, so two on this end and two on the other. And now we can go to step four, which will be connecting the other end to the part we just built. So yeah, we're gonna install these corner brackets the same way on both ends. And then we're simply gonna insert into the channel on both sides, just like that. And now we can put our other two bolts in. So before you tighten it really good, lay it down on the table, make sure it's nice and flat, and then we can tighten up all the bolts around. All right, and this is what we got. So we got a big square frame with four brackets in each corner, and also two channel nuts on each side. All right, so, so far, not too hard. Let's see our next step. So for step five, we need to go ahead and tighten all these set screws in the corner brackets. Now, if you wanna take extra you know, precaution or steps and check the square of this thing, you can. To me, it looks like it's square enough and it's not really gonna move much the way it's constructed. So if you wanna be a little more precise, you could square it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to every corner and tighten up these set screws. And what that's gonna do is gonna give us more rigidity in the frame. All right, and so all the set screws are tight. Let's go ahead and go to our next step, which is step six. And that is we're going to roll on the X-axis assembly onto the frame. And so this is this piece here. So the up goes like this, this way. And it's gonna roll onto these channels here, the longer ones. And here we can see the rollers and the channel is literally gonna go right in between the rollers. So yeah, we're just simply gonna roll it on into the frame, just like that. All right, so now we are on step seven and here it gets a little bit more complicated. So we're gonna be putting on the feet, but they also hold the belts. So we're gonna need two timing belts, two base anchors, two spacers, and four M510 screws. So let's grab our little acrylic feet here. Now there's only three and the reason why is because the fourth one is on the electronics part of it. So we're gonna need two of these, the two timing belts, four of these bolts and two washers. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna be looking to the front of the machine and the front is this here. If you look at it, you can see how this bracket is here. So this will be our front. And if we go to one of the corners here in the front, you guys can see that we're gonna use two of these mounting threads here to mount this foot. So it's simply gonna go like this. So first we'll start with this side. So we're just gonna line it up. Now we don't wanna tighten it yet because for the next part, we're gonna grab our little belt and we're gonna thread it through the little slot right here, if you guys can see that slot. And with the teeth going down, we're just gonna insert it into the slot. So it doesn't have to go too far, just a little bit, about half an inch or so. And then we're gonna take another bolt and put the washer through it and start it right here. And what that's gonna do is the washer is gonna kind of pinch the belt and that's gonna hold the belt from going anywhere. So let's go ahead and tighten that up. And so this is what it looks like. So now we can go ahead and tighten both of these bolts up snugly. Don't go super tight on it because this is acrylic, so you don't want to crack it. And that's good right there. So yeah, and here's a little better look. Hopefully you guys can see. So the belt goes through there. The washer pinches it, and then our belt goes this way. So we're gonna do the same thing on this other side. Grab our foot, start the bolt, grab the belt, go through the slot, grab our bolt with the washer, and start it here. Again, snug them up nicely, but don't go crazy. And that's it, we are done with this side. Here's our x-axis gantry. We can see there's little gears here and that's where our belts are gonna go. Same thing on the other side where the motor is. So let's go ahead and slide this thing back on there. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the belt and we're gonna literally go underneath the wheel. So I actually find this process easier to do it with this thing off completely. And the reason why is because, at least let me guys show you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go under this wheel and then over the gear and then back under this other wheel. So literally just like that. So this part is definitely a little tricky, but I'm gonna try to show you guys here a little better, but you can see it goes underneath the wheel, then over the gear and then underneath the other wheel there. So maybe you can see a little better on this angle here. So, so basically over the gear and then under the wheels. All right, and so that is, I guess, step seven and eight. So now we are at the nine. So now we need to go ahead and install our other foot. So our front of the machine is facing that way. So it's gonna be on this corner here. So same foot, same way. Start our first bolt and then grab our belt, put it through the slot and start on the second one. 
with the washer. Now this time it's gonna be a little bit different because we need to tighten up the belt a bit. So before we compress it with this bolt here, we need to go ahead and pull on it a bit and put some tension on it. So you don't wanna pull it crazy hard, but just, you know, pretty tight, just like that. So once you get a good tightness to it, you can go ahead and clamp it down. So we can see all the extra belt we got. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this one up also. And that's it. And so this side now the belt is tight. All right, so for step 10, looks like we're gonna need to install the end stop switch. And that's this guy here. And so this thing has two purposes. It acts like a switch and it also tightens the belt. And so we're working with our last corner here and the front's pointing that way. So what we're gonna need is another one of these slide in nuts that we're gonna put in there. And we're gonna grab another bolt, take our belt, put it through this hole here. And then the bolt will literally go right next to the belt into this nut. So I'm just gonna start it up here. And what we wanna do is we wanna flush it here with this end. So first things first, we wanna pull the belt through. And now we're gonna start it onto the nut. And now we can stretch it to the end here. It doesn't have to be perfect, obviously, but you know, pretty close here. So this is just the end stop switch and it tells it to stop once it gets to the back here. All right, so mine looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that up all the way. And that's it. So step 11, we're gonna be putting our control panel or electronics in, which is the last foot also. And this thing here, we have the foot. And there's gonna be two bolts that go through here, this hole and this one here. It's gonna go just like that. We're gonna start with the nut that moves. Grab a bolt. I'm gonna start it up. So once this is started and not tight, we can move it around and line up this hole with this thread here. Grab another bolt and tighten them up on both sides. All right, and so that is finished. All right, so for the next part, we're gonna have to install our stepper motor onto our x-axis carriage here. So what we're looking at is the back, and this is the front. And the motor will go from the front, like this, to the back with the plug pointing up. And we have four of these small little bolts that'll go into the motor here through this bracket. Maybe you guys can see a little better like this. But yeah, there's one, two and then three, four. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and snug them up. Again, they don't have to be crazy tight, just tight enough to hold it, so. Now we need to still put our belt the same way under the wheel, then over the gear, and then back under the wheel. So we're gonna go to this side and take this bolt out here so we can release the belt. You can do either side, it doesn't really matter. So now the belt can come out. So you're gonna have to do a little bit of fishing here but I could grab it here, so yeah. So we're just gonna go underneath and then over, then back under the roller. So now we can put it back through the slot here. Start the bolt with the washer, pull on the belt to tighten it, and then tighten the bolt to lock it in. And that's it. And so our belt now is nice and tight over the x-axis motor. All right, so for step 13, we need to install a bracket to the laser. So this is the bracket that we need, and looks like it still has the protection coating on it. Go ahead and pull that off. Grab our laser, which is in this bag. And the reason it's in this kind of bag is because there's sensitive electronics inside. So this kind of bag prevents static electricity buildup, I guess. So yeah, this is what our laser looks like. It looks pretty cool. So there's a fan here. It looks like a really huge heat sink. So here we have some kind of numbers, class. So yeah, it looks pretty interesting. And we do have a focuser here for the beam, looks like. So our bracket is gonna go here on the back where we can see these holes. So this piece goes right here somewhere. So just the very top to it, to the top of the heatsink. Now they only tell us to put two bolts in it and they seem to be lining up on the very top here. So let's go ahead and try that. So it looks like that's working. All right, so looking at the instructions, I don't think that's right. I think this has to go all the way to the top, somewhat all the way to the top because on this picture here, we can see that it goes all the way to the top. So it's a little bit confusing how it shows it here, but I guess here it kind of shows it high also. Okay, yeah, so instead of these two on the top, we're going to use the bottom one. So the bracket pretty much goes all the way almost to the very top. So yeah. All right, so we're now looking at the back of the machine. And we're going to grab our laser with the bracket. And the bracket is actually going to sit right over these four bolts here. Or the bolts are going to go through just like that. Quite simple. And there are four enclosed nuts. that will go over it. And it did provide us a wrench to tighten them up. Very nice. All right, so we're gonna tighten this up on both sides. And we're good to go. And so the rest of the steps are just plugging in all the components. So we're gonna grab our wiring. So these are the two ends. We're gonna grab the end with the large plug and the medium plug. And the large plug is gonna go all the way to the bottom. And then our switch here is gonna go to the middle. So 
So we got the bigger plug, the switch, and then the smaller plug on the very top. So you make sure you push them in all the way so they can lock in. Now well, that's what it looks like. All right, so from the control panel, we're gonna plug in our Y motor connector right here. And this is the larger plug. And so our other wire that comes out from the main board, and this one's all black here, is gonna go right here to the bottom plug. And there's another plug here, and that's for this, and that goes to the laser. And we're gonna plug that right here. So you can see that this one goes out to the other end. And the one that's coming from the main board goes on the bottom here. So here we are at the laser. We have only two plugs here which is the motor and our laser. And that's pretty much it guys, that is all the plugs. Now, in the manual it does show to put a zip tie right here. So let's go ahead and do that. So there's a little hole right here where the motor mounts and the zip tie fits through there. And what this is for is to secure the cables whenever it runs around and if it snatches on something, it's not gonna unplug it. So we're just gonna zip tie them together to the bracket, just like that. Now there is this doohickey here, and I'm not sure where it goes, I didn't see in the manual, but it looks like it goes right over one of these cable protectors, and there are arrows on them, but let's see if I can figure out where this goes. Alright, so this is what our laser looks like, so we have a really huge engraving area here. So yeah, we have two axes, we have the Y axis, which is, you know, this way, and then we have the X axis, this way. So both of the axes roll on rollers on these channels. You can adjust the rollers, how tight they are to the channel if you need to. There's eccentric nuts on the bottom here and two up here. So I didn't have to do any adjustments on mine. Everything seemed fine. Now I also went ahead and put a zip tie here to kind of hold this little junction here together. So yeah, this wire here shouldn't technically be in the way. So the X-axis in stop switch is right here. So there's a little button there. Home's right there. And the Y is here, the one we installed. So it will home just like that. Now another thing to consider if your x-axis here is not lining up with the frame. Basically, if you want to measure from here to here to make sure you have the same distance on each side, you can. And basically what that's going to do is it's going to make sure that it's square. So when you do install the belt, you might want to take consideration of that because you could install it sitting sideways a bit. Now, if you need to adjust it at this point, the best thing to do instead of loosening belts and stuff and then jumping teeth, what you could do is just loosen the little set screws in these gears. There's two of them. And that'll release it and then you can move it individually. You only need to move one side to line it up and then tighten the set screws and that's it. And here in the front or the back, I'm not sure what this would be, I guess the back, we have our little control panel and if you guys can see there's two little buttons here. So this one on this side is the power button. This is the reset button. And then we have our plug for the USB connection and our power plug. If I don't know if I noticed, but these feet do have like a little felt on the bottom of them. So it's for grip and I guess some vibration suppression all right so for the next part let's go ahead and plug it in and see what it does just out of curiosity i got the power adapter plugged into the wall let's plug it into the laser and here we have the power button so we're going to click that see what happens all right so it looks like it's homing okay x and y switch all right well, that's good. So it looks like it's operational. So I think for the next part, we need to go to the computer, install the software, and I guess it's called Laser GRBL. And it gives us here a few links to where we can download that and install it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And uh, yeah, we'll check out the software and how to get connected. And then we'll do our first test. All right, guys, so I'm gonna use this old Windows laptop to install this program, and I think you need Windows for this GRBL software. So there's a link here. It's right there, the shorter link. So once you type that in into your browser, it goes to a Dropbox, and there's a file called Laser Master 2. So over here, you're gonna find the download button, and you can download it which I already did. So let's go ahead and open it up. And here we can see what's inside the folder. So it looks like there's a few languages and there appears to be two different softwares you can download. There's a GRBL and a Lightburn. So I'm not sure which one is better and which is not, but we're just gonna stick with GRBL for this. And I think this is a Windows only. I think Lightburn you have to pay for. In any case, let's go ahead and open the GBRL. And so here we have the installation. So you're just gonna install it like you normally would do any program. And once you install it, you're gonna install the drivers. They're there's a folder here and depending on what kind of computer you have either Windows 7 or Windows 10 you're going to install these drivers here so I went ahead and did all that so let's go ahead and open up the program and this is what it looks like so it says here you can update it we're going to cancel that for now 
it. Sorry for all the background icons. This computer hasn't been really used for a long time and it's just been neglected. I'm surprised it even works. So according to the instructions, we can go ahead and connect our USB cable. And then here it shows you where to check if your driver is installed correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug the cable into the printer and the other end into the computer. So it looks like the computer acknowledged that something happened. So let's go to our control panel, device manager, and then over here on the ports down the menus. And here we can see we have the STM microelectronics virtual COM port and it's a COM 10. So it looks like our drivers and everything installed correctly. So let's go back to the software. And here we can see on the top here it says com and it's on three so we need to drop down the menu we can see we have a 10 here so depending on how it reads and what it sees i guess it's gonna give you the options there so let's change it to 10. And so now what we got to do is we need to connect so we got to click this connect button so let's see if it connects all right so it actually connected look at that order laser master 2 ready okay cool so it looks like we have some navigation buttons here with the home button and some more buttons. Now, before we do anything else, on the instructions here, it says that we need to install our buttons. So there's, I guess, special functions that we need to install. And if we go down here to the bottom part and right click, we get add custom button or import custom button. So we're gonna click the import custom buttons and now we're gonna find the folder that we downloaded which is right here. And we're going to find laser GRBL control software. And here we can see the custom buttons. So we're gonna click on that and open. So it's gonna ask us to import it, question mark. I'm gonna say yes. Import minimum brightness, yes. So I guess it's asking us for every single button, what we want. So we're just gonna say yes to everything. So it looks like a bunch of buttons. All right, and so it looks like it's done. And you guys can see here on the bottom, we have a bunch of new buttons. So we have a reset button, a homing button, an unlock button, another button here that I think makes the current location of the laser the new home or where it starts from. So here we have a laser button, and this is how we're going to focus the laser. By clicking this, it should turn on. And then we have some brightness buttons here. Boundary and settings. Well, let's click the settings button, see what that's all about. I'm not sure what that does, but in any case, let's go ahead and click the homing button here and see what happens. Okay, so when I clicked it, the laser actually homed. So we are connected. So I'm gonna use this little sheet of papers to kind of put over the laser. What I wanna to try to do is check the laser and see that's working. So let's first move it around. So we do have hot buttons that we can actually move it to certain positions. All right, so we're over the paper. I'm gonna go ahead and click this laser button here and see what happens. Oh, okay, so it actually turned on the laser. All right, so I pushed the medium brightness and it started burning the paper right away. So this button here, I guess, faintly turns it on so you can actually adjust the laser point. And this is good for adjusting the focus. So it's not burning the paper as you guys can see. When I did tap it a little bit on the medium there, it started burning it immediately. So on the bottom of the laser, there's a little ring that you can turn and that will focus it. So what you're trying to do is you're just trying to make the fine point, I guess, of what you're gonna burn. So, And you might wanna go ahead and put on your glasses for safety reasons. So yeah, the idea here is just to make the finest point you can. You wanna get it as clear as possible. So if you turn it, you can see like there's a little haze around it. The more clear it is, the more accurate it will be. All right, so let's go ahead and find a file to print. So I got a few images off of the internet, but you can practically drag any you know file in here, so a picture of any kind. So I got the order logo here. So we're gonna go ahead and burn that. So when you bring an image in, you're gonna get this window here that processes the image itself. So here we can adjust the brightness, make it lighter or darker. So depending you know, on how dark or light you wanna go. So I guess we'll go a little lighter. Then here we can adjust our contrast. Also kind of changes the image. So this is just fine tuning the image itself. And so with time as you use the laser, you can kind of already see how it's gonna turn out depending on the contrast. So over here under conversion tool, you can use line to line tracing and that's just gonna be literally burning lines into this image here. Or you can go to the one bit BW, but it's just little dots everywhere. So it's a different pattern of how it puts down the burn so I think I prefer this better so I'm just gonna go straight to that because I'd rather see dots than lines if there's gonna be any kind of gap now speaking about the gap and other options here below that we have the styles I guess and you have all kinds of different kinds 
So let's try this Atkinson. As we choose the different styles, it changes here how it looks also. So there's a lot of options to play with to get, you know, the perfect burn. So depending on, you know, what you're engraving into, do a few samples and run a few different settings to see what the best parameters are. Now, more importantly over here, it says quality. So the higher this is, the more quality it will be. So if I go down a little more, so let's say four lines per millimeter, it's not gonna be as clean compared to, let's say seven or eight lines a millimeter, so. So there's just gonna be more gaps in between the little holes. So I think it starts with five, but I'm gonna go up a little bit and go to seven. All right, so then we're gonna click next, and then we got a bunch of other options, so I'm not gonna mess with any of this since I don't really know what I'm doing yet. So we do have speed here, so I'm guessing if you go slower, it'll be a stronger burn. So depending on, again, what you're engraving into, all this could matter, so. I'm just gonna leave everything the way it is and click create, and that's supposed to make our graphic here ready to print. So this is what it looks like. And here we can see it's 28 millimeters. I guess this is millimeters. 28 by 132 here in the corner. And obviously all this is probably adjusted and I think in the previous screen we could have scaled in or whatnot else. But in any case, all that stuff is very explanatory. Right now we're just gonna try to figure out how to actually start our first burn. So I think from here all we need to do really is just hit this little play button right here. Now before we do, we need something to burn into and I'm gonna use this piece of cardboard here. So I decided not to use that paper. And the reason for that is when I accidentally turned on the laser just for a second, it actually burned through my table here. So when you saw that earlier when I turned it on by accident, it burned through the paper straight into the table. So this 20 watt laser here is quite powerful. So we're just gonna use this cardboard here for starters. And I think the way this works is wherever the head is, is basically where it's gonna start kinda, or it's gonna be the middle of it maybe. I'm not sure exactly. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit that play button. Uh, let's see what happens. Oh, there it goes. And look at that. Okay, cool. Wow, that laser is really bright. I'm gonna make sure I put on my glasses. And there it goes, it's burning away into the cardboard. And it looks like we got the intensity just right because it seems to be making a really nice engravement. Now there is some smoke coming up. I don't know if you guys can see in the camera. But, you know, you want to be in a ventilated area and you probably, unless you know what you're doing, you probably don't want to leave this thing unattended, especially in the beginning when you're first getting used to it because, you know, you could probably cause a fire by accident. Be very careful with that. Don't underestimate this thing. All right, well, this is good news, so we're printing away. And if you guys hear me say printing like I just did, I'm probably gonna do that because I do a lot of 3D printing reviews and this is kind of some similarities here. But yeah, if we look at the screen, we can see that there's a little cross right there. I don't know if you guys can see it's running around. That's actually where the laser is in real time. So it started from the bottom going up. And over here it says 13 minutes, so that's how much the total amount of time it'll take to burn this. Here we have a buffer and here's a code. And the code is going, sending it to the printer to do the movements and the laser actuations. Right here we have a progress bar, it says two minutes. So two minutes has passed, 13 minutes is the project. So we have about 11 minutes left. All right, so we're just gonna let this thing engrave. We'll try to catch it right before it finishes. All right, so it looks like it's, okay, there it is. So it's finished. So it just literally just shuts off and it's done. All right, so let's see how this thing turned out. And wow, right off the bat, it looks really good. So it did a really nice burn and it looks quite accurate. I don't really see any issues with that. That's a really nice burn. And we can see that the O is lighter than these and that's the way it was because this was a red color so it ended up being more lighter than the black letters. Well, that's great. So it burns really well in the cardboard. Now I wanna try something else. So what I'm going to do is go to file and then find my new file. There it is and open it. So it's like a picture of a tree with birds on it. And it looks pretty cool actually. So it looks like all of our settings still stay the same. I don't think I need to go darker. I think I need to stay brighter. I'm just going to leave it since our other logo turned out just fine. I'm going to leave it right where it is. Use the, all the same settings here. And by the way, this is where you can mess with the image. So you can actually invert the color if you wanted to. That's kind of cool. So you can crop the image, flip it vertically, flip it horizontally, also rotate it in either direction. So well, we're gonna leave it just the way it is. So I wanna bump up the speed a little bit. 1500 instead of 1000. Let's we'll see what happens. So let's click create. So it's gonna slice it. So this is a quite a large image. We can see it's 72 by 128. Well, I guess it's not that large, but so yeah, I don't know. It looks pretty good to me. But what I wanna do this time, I wanna home the machine. So I'm gonna click here on the home button. So it's homing. And so now I'm just gonna leave the cardboard right here in that corner, wherever it starts, it should be good right there. All right. 
Okay, and so it starts working right over there in that corner. So if you start from the home, it's gonna start right there in that same corner. By the way guys, these safety goggles are tripping me out. The reason why is they delete everything that's red. And let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna set this drill right here and you can see that it's red, right? Safety glasses over the lens and it turns to black. It's so bizarre. Now in reality, your eyes kind of adjust to the green and it all just looks normal, but the camera just looks more green. But you can see there on the drill, it's turned black. So in real life, it's a lot more surreal. All right, and that only took 14 minutes. So let's see how that one came out. And look at that, just as expected, it's pretty much perfect. So yeah, I can see that it's not perfect, obviously, but it's very good. I think some tweaking will definitely help it. You know, part of the learning curve is you have to figure out what the best settings are for the material that you're burning into. So far, everything seems to be working and it's working great. So I'm gonna play around with this thing and engrave some more stuff and try to use some other materials maybe. So I wanted to print another tree here on the same cardboard and I made it quite a bit bigger. It's 200 by 163 or about there. I did figure out that this button right here, it's called borders. So I'm gonna go ahead and push it. So what it does, it draws out, well, can't really see it, can you? It draws out the perimeters of where it's gonna go. So then it goes twice over there. And so now I know that it's gonna fit and it's gonna be perfect. All right, so it started and yeah, this is gonna be a pretty big one. Kinda curious how it's gonna turn out. So far it's looking good. So as I'm using the software, I'm figuring out that you could do a few more things. So to the side over here where we have the conversion tool, we can see that we have more options and this one that's called vectorize is actually the one you would use if you wanna cut out something or trace something. So I got my JV logo here uploaded and I chose vectorize. If I go back to the one bit, you can see that's what it's gonna engrave. But if I go to vectorize, it's gonna outline it and it shows you what it's outlining. So let's click next. That's the size of it. And we can edit the size right here and the offsets. Click create. And so this is what it's gonna engrave. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the play button. And away it goes. So this is not very big, so it's gonna, yeah, there it goes, it only took a second. But here we can see what it just drew. So you can, you know, obviously make that as big as you want or as small as you want. So this could work very good for like cutting something out or just engraving in that style. All right guys, so I engraved quite a few things and definitely I came to the conclusion that all of the materials that you burn or cut or engrave into, there is some balancing in a laser intensity and speeds and things like that. So now I did burn a lot of cardboard because that was, you know, quite easy and a good place to experiment on. So let's just look at some of that stuff. Order logo and we can see that looks pretty good. We got this KFC guy here, it looks good. An Apple logo. And if you guys see, if I touch it, there's actually a residue from the burn itself that's still on there. So that's something to keep in mind because once you burn something, it's not gonna be staying that way unless maybe you clear coat it and it'll, you know, solidify it. There's a picture of laser and that shows, you know, that it can do darker and lighter. So this is just a lower quality of the same logo. But here we have something really interesting and this is a grayscale graph. It gets darker and lighter throughout the scale. So down here we got darker and then it gets quite light. Same thing here, and you can see how well this laser does and the spectrum of its grayscale, which is not much, but if you can fall in these areas right here, you can see that it can go pretty light and then, you know, quite dark. Now this is for cardboard, so, you know, every material is gonna be different and quite a bit different. But I played around with cardboard because it was easy and something to learn because this is my first time using a laser. I can totally see this being a fun hobby or even personalizing certain items and even making a business out of it, technically. So here we have a few more burns, same logo with a different setting. This little picture here turned out great. And then I tried to print this tree and what was happening here, it wouldn't finish as you can see to both of them. What I wanted to do on these is speed it up and I went to 2000 speed and that was too fast and I think it would kick out a buffer and stop. So once I lowered it, it engraved just fine. And that's what we see here. And we can see it finished and it looks good. But there are some smudges because I touched it here, so. But here's something interesting. These are photos. They were actually grayscaled photos. And this really shows a good dynamic range in the laser, meaning the amount it's able to intensify 
the laser and then where it's lightly burning. I was definitely really happy to see how this turned out and you know this can be tweaked a little bit lighter like this picture here looks like it needs to be a little bit lighter but of course if you go a little lighter her face might be too light but it does look like it needs to be and then the one over here with the guy seems to be about just right so you know it's all in the settings and it's all about getting the feel of what material you're working with to fine tune it and it's all done in the software now I did engrave other things like this little plank of wood that was included and what I did here is what happens if you adjust the speed so this is not even intensities this is just speed and so here we have 1500 speed you can see it's quite a bit lighter here we have 1000 here on the top we have 500 and then 250. So you can see just the speed itself slows the laser down so it ends up burning more. And that's all going to depend on what material that you're burning into. So I did burn a few things like my wallet here since it's leather. You can see that JV logo right there. So this is an outline type. And then on the inside I did one of these kind and you can see how that turned out. It's also very nice. And this is in leather here. So if you're going to engrave constantly leather things, you can really fine tune it to exactly like you want it and it'll always do the same thing every time. So here we have a little acrylic panel and you can see this is a little bit harder engrave and this is a lighter engrave. So you can see that the harder one goes deeper in. And I also engraved into this power bank here that has this rubbery texture. So, and we can see how that turned out right there. And there's another one down here, so that one kind of got smudged a bit. But in any case, you guys can see that you can pretty much engrave anything. With enough power and slow speed, you know, you could really burn into stuff. So I do have here a spatula that I also engraved into plastic. And this is also very quick engraves. Speaking about quick engraves, that's all going to depend on your laser. So the laser we got here is a 20 watt. This is their higher version. Now it doesn't actually put out 20 watts of lasering, but it's still a very powerful laser. And so unless you need high speeds or actually cutting power, like you're going to cut something out, you might want to go for the 15 watt laser, which is more than enough for everything. Because going up to the 20 is, you know, quite a bit of a price bump and you could just slow the 15 one down and, you know, get the same results. So depending on what you're looking for, if it's speed, an actual stronger cutting power than the 20 watt might be your choice but the 15 watt I feel like should be more than adequate for general purpose and then they also have a 7 watt and that's going to be very light burning kind of like into paper cardboard uh, other things and again you can slow that down and still get the same result it'll just take you know a bit longer so there is one more cardboard engraving I did that I want to show you guys and I want to do something quite a bit larger so this is 400 by almost 300 I guess something like that 280 or something and I wanted to do a lighter burn so you guys can see a little better of what happens to the dynamic range so this might not be the best picture but this is a city at night you can kind of see the reflections here you know and all the lights and everything on the bridges so definitely an interesting burn but I feel like it should have been probably a bit darker and it would have looked a little better but still overall pretty cool and you can kind of get an idea of the difference between the darker and the lighter shades and what kind of dynamic range you can get between the two so so yeah very possible to print things like this and you know could be quite professional and pretty amazing looking and if you did this on wood it probably look quite a bit better so I feel like this laser definitely has a definition that you would need to create some pretty unique and interesting projects so yeah, depending on what you want to use it for, it seems like you can adjust it to your needs. Now, if you are going to print something larger or thicker and you're not able to adjust your focus, you might have to move it up and down on this bracket here, the laser itself, or raise the whole frame up on some kind of stools. So that's something to consider also. So yeah, guys, well, hopefully this video was useful to you. I know I didn't engrave too much interesting things and mostly cardboard. Even though all these parts are pretty familiar to me from 3D printing, it's still definitely a learning curve with the laser. But if you're even a little bit creative you can definitely see how this could be very useful in a lot of projects so if you enjoyed this video and it was useful to you then hit that like button if you want to pick up a laser like this they have the 20 watt the 15 and the 7 watt version so check those out I'll have some links in the description and also if you don't want something this big they have a smaller kind that might be more suited for your needs and I'll leave that also in the description and if you guys enjoyed these kind of videos I do a lot of 3d printing reviews and other interesting things on this channel so stay tuned for more and if you enjoy 3d printers then check out my playlist. I got quite a few of those. And as always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.